Hello, I'm Troy Peoples, Senior Pastor at Delaney Street Baptist Church here in beautiful, sunny Orlando, Florida. We are all about glorifying God, reaching people, and changing lives. After the message, I'll be back to give you some more information about our church and how to grow in your relationship with Jesus. Good morning. Let's take our Bibles, turn to Ephesians chapter 6, beginning in verse number 14. Let's all stand this morning as we finish this spiritual warfare, this battle that we are engaged in, Ephesians chapter 6, beginning in verse 14. The title of the message this morning is The Importance of Prayer. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, in addition to all, taking up the shield of faith, with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit. And with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. And pray on my behalf that utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel. For which I am an ambassador in chains, that in proclaiming it, I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Lord, as we come before you this morning, we pray that you would help us to understand the importance of communion with you, praying and spending time with you, hearing from you, Lord, as you open up your words, you speak to our hearts. Lord, we pray that we would come together this morning with an open heart to hear what you have for us today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. If you notice in beginning in verse 18, in my Bible it has a little symbol there that describes this is a new paragraph that starts. But the reality is, is this isn't a new paragraph. This is really kind of a summation of this armor of God and really everything that Paul has been saying to this point. That prayer is vital to the Christian life, especially as it deals with what Paul has been describing as the spiritual battle that we are engaged in. Now let me ask you, how many here know for a fact that you are involved in a spiritual battle? Some of us, maybe you've experienced it more than others, but the, the reality is, is that we are engaged in a spiritual battle. Battle And the scripture says that with all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the spirit. And then he says, with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. Now, I know that perhaps you have probably seen some of these acronyms for helping us to understand maybe the types of prayers or what prayer is all about. There's a few of them that you have, are probably familiar with, and then I'm going to give you mine. One of them is ACTS, A-C-T-S. You know that one. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication. That is, those are the types of prayer. We can come to the Lord Jesus Christ. We can come through the Lord, and we can pray to the Father. We can adore Him for who He is because He is hallowed. We can come to Him with our confessions. We can come to Him with our thanksgiving, and we can come to Him with our supplications. But there are other ones like pray, P-R-A-Y. Praise, repentance, asking for others, asking for yourself. So there are these great acronyms that help us to understand what types of prayer, how to pray. I'm going to give you mine. One is prayer, P-R-A-Y-E-R. -E Powerful, resurrection, authority, yielding, eternal results. Powerful resurrection authority yielding eternal results. When you go back and you look at this, this concluding remarks that Paul is saying, listen, with all prayer and petition, pray at all times. There is this emphasis that everything that he has been talking about thus far, even all the way back in the very first part of Ephesians, walking in unity, walking in harmony, walking all of these aspects of the Christian life, we come to this part where he's talking about this spiritual battle that rages, and he says, listen, with all prayer, with all kinds of prayer, 
adoration and confession and thanksgiving and supplication and intercessory prayer with all kinds of prayer and with all petitions pray at all times he makes some general statements about prayer then he goes into some of the specifics that he's asking for prayer for himself and we'll get to that in just a few minutes but unfortunately too often the priority of prayer in spiritual battle that we face is overlooked in fact prayer is overlooked in many of the christians lives prayer is something that we do when we're in trouble some prayer is something we do when we need something oh lord and we begin to pray well we know that that is not the way we pray the lord has given us the outline for how we are to pray the model prayer not only that but we see all throughout scripture that we are to keep knocking be persistent we are to be faithful in our prayers we are to pray at all times paul tells us in first thessalonians that we are to continue to pray at all times as well even with this passage so much emphasis gets placed on the nature of the battle which it is a spiritual battle and it's not against flesh and blood and it's against powers and authorities and principalities much emphasis is given on the nature and we've looked at that much of the emphasis is given on the different elements of the armor and we've spent a lot of time looking at each of those armors but many times prayer is overlooked how does prayer fit into this command that paul is giving us to put on the armor of god i i believe that as we see the heart of paul and we see as he outlines this that paul did not see it this way prayer was vital it was what brought all these pieces together it's what brought an understanding of what how the belt of truth is operates in our life how the shield of faith operates in our life how we are to put it on what it means for us but not only that paul says that we need to pray at all times but we also need to pray for one another so in our prayers there is a time of prayer that we're praying for the needs that we have individually but also praying for the body as well it's interesting that Paul is connects, he connects verse 14 to stand firm. Stand firm is connected with verse 18, with all prayer. And really, it's all of these, this armor of God that, we've, that we are to stand firm. We don't stand firm in ourselves. we stand firm in the armor of God. We stand firm by putting on the Lord Jesus Christ. So we begin to understand that it's through prayer that we can be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. It's with prayer that we put on the whole armor of God by faith. How many are familiar with George Duffield? You'll, you'll know who he is when I tell you what song he wrote. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. The third verse says this, stand up, stand up for Jesus. Stand in his strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you you dare not trust your own put on the gospel armor each piece put on with what with prayer put each piece on with prayer where duty calls or danger never be never wanting there it's with prayer that we put on each piece of God's armor when we put on the belt of truth we put it on with prayer when we put on the helmet of salvation we put it on with prayer when we put on the breastplate of righteousness we put it on with prayer and Paul uses this phrase with all prayer really by means of prayer by all means with prayer and petition to put on to pray without ceasing when we come to this realization that with prayer and petition pray at all times this idea of pray at all times it's this it's a general word that is used to describe this worshipful approach to god that if we're going to fight this spiritual battle and the battle is real when we fight this spiritual battle it begins with us falling on our face before god and falling on our knees before god in prayer and adoration and worship of the lord because without him without a relationship with him we will fail in the battle so he says pray it includes this reverence and this adoration prayer is an act of worship it's not just something that we go through it's not just a duty oh i checked off i prayed this week no it's an act of worship adoration and confession and thanksgiving and supplication we can bring everything to god in prayer 
and I do bring everything, probably more than I should. <laughs> I bring everything to him. We can come to him with anything that is on our heart, that's on our mind, but we do not need to come with wrong attitude. We must come with a right attitude. That attitude is, I'm coming into the very presence of God Almighty. And with adoration and with reverence and with a worshipful heart, I'm coming to him realizing that God is God. He's not some benevolent grandfather that's doling out dollar bills to his grandchildren or giving us what we want. Lord, I need this. I want this. We come to him with the recognition that he is our Father who art in heaven. Praying in the Spirit. He says there that we are to pray at all times, but in a certain way. Pray at all times in the Spirit. Now let's take just a few minutes and talk about what that is and what that is not. Paul says pray at all times in the Spirit. We need to understand, Paul's point is this, that all prayer is to be made in accordance with the Holy Spirit, for we cannot pray. I cannot pray and I cannot know what is within the will of God unless the Spirit reveals that to me. How to fight the battle, how to stand firm, how to pray, all it is because I've come to Him in prayer in accordance with the Holy Spirit that I can understand the deep things of God. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 that the deep things of God are, are only known by the Spirit of God. And as believers, we have the Spirit of God indwelling us, and He opens up our hearts and our understanding and our minds to understand the deep things of God. I can know the heart of God. I can know the mind of Christ because they're spiritually appraised. The Spirit of God indwells each one of us as believers, and the Spirit of God prom he prompts us and he, he guides us in our prayers according to the will of the Father. So it's vital for us to pray in the spirit and the spirit is always in conformity with the word of god as we saw as we saw last week the spirit of god is always working in cooperation is always conforming to the to the to the word of god the spirit of god and the word of god working together in our lives so to pray in the spirit is to pray in the conformity of the spirit of god we always have the means to determine whether we are following the holy spirit or some other Spirit. Praying in the Spirit is not some other things, though. It's not speaking in tongues. It's not ecstatic utterances. Acts chapter 2, beginning in verse 8 through 11, could not be more clear that the people that are filled with the Holy Spirit and they're speaking in other tongues, they were speaking other languages not known to those who heard them because the specific languages and the dialects are listed in the text. When you go back and you read that, they, they are hearing what is being preached in their own language. Not only that, but you can come to speaking in tongues that perhaps it would be the benefit of those who would, who would be able to speak in tongues, but the Scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 21 and 22, that speaking in tongues was for the benefit of Jewish unbelievers and not for believers. So it's not some ecstatic utterances, it's not some private prayer life, some private prayer language. Praying in the Spirit is praying under the control of the Holy Spirit for God's will to be done. A person who prays in the Spirit is seeking out God's will and seeking out God's glory above all else. When I pray, I'm not praying just selfishly, although there are times when I'm praying for the Lord to meet those needs. Praying for those who are lost in my family. Praying for those who don't know Christ. But I'm praying in faith, and I'm praying in truth, and I'm praying in confidence, not in myself or not even in my prayer. I'm praying in confidence to the Lord. Praying in the Spirit with great expectation that God is going to move, that God is working, but also praying in submission. Praying in the Spirit is praying in the truth, praying in faith, praying in submission to God. Let me give you some examples. You see it when Jesus is praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. He says, My Father, if this cannot pass away unless I drink it, 
Thy will be done. Jesus was praying in the Spirit, having communion with the Father in the Spirit, being obedient, submissive to the Lord, to the Father. It is Paul praying and striving to go to Bithynia and be sensitive to the leading of the Spirit to see that the Lord wanted him to go to Macedonia instead. In Acts chapter 16, again, this sensitivity to the leadership of the Holy Spirit, this obedience and this submission to God. It's Paul praying three times to have the thorn removed from his flesh, but being satisfied with the answer from God that the Lord's grace was sufficient for him. Praying in the Spirit, it's God's Spirit that's bearing witness with our spirit as believers, and it's through His Word where we are seeking to know the will of God, to understand the will of God, and then to go out and do the will of God. Praying in the Spirit is walking in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit is being filled or controlled by the Spirit of God. So then what does that, what does that mean then to pray in this? What does that look like? We need to understand that as I pray and as I offer up petitions to the Lord for my own life to serve Him faithfully, to walk in holiness with putting my armor on, putting the Lord's armor on my life, but I also am not just praying for me, I'm praying for you because we understand he says there, so you are the church. He says, stand firm. And then he says, verse 18, with all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the spirit and with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for who? For the saints. Now he says there back in verse 12, for our struggle. Paul is writing to believers. Paul is writing to the church at Ephesus. And he's saying, there are times when I pray. He, he asked for them to pray for him. But he says, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. The struggle, the spiritual battle is ours to face together. So many times when we look at this putting on the armor of God, we, we look at it individually, and we are individually to put these things on. But there is a corporate aspect to putting on the armor of God. That as the church, we began to understand that spiritual warfare praying begins with that understanding and idea that our battle is ours. The battle, the spiritual battle that we face, we're in this together. Spiritual warfare is both individual, but it's also corporate. Warfare is not you and me binding Satan or some other idea like that it's simply coming to him taking up the armor of god putting on the lord jesus christ resisting and standing firm in prayer putting on the armor of god and letting the lord fight the battle and are we to pray concerning the armor of god for ourselves and for each other well we understand as we've we saw in in, in stand up stand up for jesus each piece put on with prayer and there is an individual aspect to that but there's also me praying that you might put on the belt of truth that you might take up the shield of faith and i want you to be praying for me that i might take up the breastplate of righteousness Amen. see we are in this together to bear one another's burdens to love one another to spur each other along as we pray we began to take each piece and we put it on with prayer what does that look like? Well, let me give you some insight into that, and there's, it's not comprehensive, but just follow along. And, and, and as I began to look at these, think about yourself. I pray that as I am taking up the belt of truth, that I would be set apart by the truth of God's Word. That I would be transformed and renewed in my mind by the Word of God. My prayer is that I would be controlled and directed by God's word, the truth of God's word. I pray that as I take the belt of truth, I'm praying that Satan's lies would be exposed and that his slander against God and against God's church would be revealed. I'm praying that for myself, but I'm also praying that for you. As I take up the breastplate of righteousness, I pray that I would stand in the righteousness of Christ alone, not in my own righteousness. I'm praying that I would be convinced, 
more and more and more that a living faith produces works of righteousness, James tells us. I'm praying that for myself, but I'm praying that for you. I pray that I would walk in unity and purity and harmony and victory as Paul has outlined in this letter. I pray that I would do that. I pray that the body of Christ would do that. I pray that I would not be carried away by my emotions, but would instead seek after holiness in all things regardless of how I might feel about things. I pray that I would deal with other people with grace and with mercy instead of anger and revenge and resentment. I pray that I would model godliness to my children. And I pray that my children would love the Lord with all their heart. And as I take up the breastplate of righteousness, I pray that I would live righteously before you and before the Lord and before the lost world, praying for honesty and integrity and moral uprightness, and I pray that I would keep the priorities of God that he has set for me rather than the ones I try to set up for myself. I pray as I take the gospel of peace I pray that God's peace would control me regardless of my circumstances, that I would not let anxiety and worry and doubt and fear enter into my thoughts. Because the spiritual battle begins in the mind. I pray that God's peace would be my sure and solid footing. I pray that that strong foundation upon which the Christian life is to be built would be strong in my life. I pray that I would seek out and rejoice in my relationship with God and I would not neglect that relationship in any way, that I would not be lazy, that I would not neglect, that I would not be indifferent, that I would not be apathetic. Take the gospel of peace and put it on with prayer. I pray as I take up the shield of faith that my faith would grow stronger as I see my faith tested and as I see my faith proven to be true in the face of persecution, in the face of despair, in the face of discouragement. And I will say like David says, Lord, I trust you. That the flames of each of the devil's fiery darts would be extinguished by my trust in God, thoroughly grounded in his character and his promises. As I take up the shield of faith, I pray that I, in faith, would pursue godliness and obedience and things unseen, his kingdom and his righteousness. I'm praying these things for me, but I'm praying them for you. That I would take up the shield and stand shoulder to shoulder with my brothers and sisters in Christ, knowing that the very gates of hell will not overpower us. Because we have taken up this shield of faith and we stand shoulder to shoulder as the church. And as the Lord told his disciples, the gates of hell will not overpower the church. We've got to pray for we are in a spiritual battle. Taking up the helmet of salvation, I pray that I would live according to this new nature that has been given to me at salvation. And that I would live with salvation's hope. Moving forward towards an ever-increasing holiness, looking forward to the day that the Lord returns. That I would view life's, that I would view life from eternity's perspective and no longer live for the pleasures of the moments of each day. That my mind would not be distracted or divided or discouraged or defeated or deceived in any way. I pray that doubt would be removed as I take the helmet of salvation. I pray that my mind would be renewed and every thought would be taken captive to Christ. Take each piece and put it on with prayer. As I take up the sword of the Spirit, I pray that I would handle it accurately, both in its defensive use and also in its offensive use. 
defensively that I would become mature and firm and understanding and in my convictions based solely and solidly on the scriptures and the scriptures alone and that I would be skilled to handle and to apply the word of God appropriately to each of Satan's enticements and slanders. I pray that I would remain strong against both the winds of doctrine that would seek to blow me off course my own desires that would move me to seek my own will instead of the Lord's. Offensively, I take the sword of the Spirit and I pray that I would know the Bible well enough to proclaim Jesus and His gospel accurately. That I would be able to bring down the fortresses of philosophy and speculations of the unbelieving and bring them to captive to the obedience of Christ. Bringing down strongholds. This is what I pray. But the scripture says, not only do we pray for ourselves, but we pray for one another. And I want you to think about what Paul is asking here. It's kind of ironic. And, it, and you have to ask the question, okay, so which came first? Because Paul says in verse 19, and pray on my behalf, he tells the Ephesian believers, pray on my behalf. This is the Apostle Paul saying, pray for me. And he says this, that utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known with boldness the mysteries of the gospel. The Apostle Paul is praying for boldness. Now, which came first, Paul's boldness or the prayers that led up to Paul's Boldness. Well, I think it's a little bit of both because it's, this, is the, this is the Paul who began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue of Damascus only a few days after he got saved. He went straight to the synagogue and began to proclaim the Lord Jesus Christ. That's pretty bold. He had just been spending his whole life persecuting the church, and now he's going to go boldly into the synagogue and he's going to proclaim the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the same Paul who went out on missionary journey after missionary journey after missionary journey. And it's there that he proclaimed the gospel everywhere he went. He stood in Athens at the Aragopagus and he began to proclaim that Jesus is the, the, the unknown God that the philosophers had a, had a monument built to. This is the same Paul who is praying for boldness. We've got to pray for the saints because we're in a spiritual battle. We pray diligently and with perseverance. We pray for one another. How can I pray for those in my church? I've given you just, this isn't a comprehensive list, just things to be thinking about. I, I pray, how can I pray? How can you pray for the person that's sitting next to you or in front of you or behind you? You can pray for them to be bold in their faith. Pray that all fear and all, everything that would keep people from being bold in their faith, that they would, that they would be able to stand in the face of persecution or despair or or ridicule, or whatever it is that they might face, pray that that would be removed, and that they would have courage to share the gospel. Pray for boldness in faith. Two, you can be praying for them to be faithful in their service. Now, you better be praying that for yourself first, but you need to be praying that for others as well, to be faithful, to use the spiritual gift that God has given you, the natural abilities that God has given you for His glory and for the edification or the building up of His church. Model the life of Christ in service. Be praying to, they would have a, a righteous, uh, they, they would be righteous in their actions. Micah chapter 6, verse 8 tells us these are the things that the God, this is the thing that God requires to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with God. That's how I can pray for you. That's how you can pray for me that I would walk, that I would love kindness, that I would walk humbly with God. Not only that, but we can pray for that humbleness in character to remove that pride, that self-reliance, to remove any jealousy or any, anything that might be in our life that would keep us from serving with a humble heart. And we need to pray, as Paul told the church at Philippi, that we need to seek after those things, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right and pure and lovely and of good repute. These are the things that you are to dwell on. Pray that others would be submissive to God's will. 
James 4, 7, Submit therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. There are so many ways that we can pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to be praying for families. We need to be praying for marriages. We need to be praying that they would raise up godly families, that they would teach their children to love the Lord with all their heart, with all their soul, and with all of their mind, and to undergird that in prayer. And then finally this. My prayer for you and my, my hope and my prayer is that you would pray for those sitting around you. That those sitting around you would stand up and be strong ambassadors for Christ. To boldly share the gospel in this world because that's what we've called to do. To go out and to seek and to reconcile the lost, to be salt and light in this community. We need to pray that they would stand up. We need to pray that we would wake up because Paul tells us it is already the hour for us to awaken from sleep. For now salvation is nearer than when we believed. The Lord's return is imminent. Pray for those around you that they would get up and put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh in regard to its lust. Pray for those around you that they would stand up, that they would wake up, that they would get up, that they would speak up. For faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. That's how we can pray for all of the saints. You just bow your head right where you are. This morning, the invitation is simple. Pray. The altar is open. You can come and pray at the altar. We're not going to sing an invitation, but we are going to play. This time is a time for us to pray for one another. You can pray right where you are, but I encourage you to come and pray. Maybe go and take somebody and bring them to the altar and pray with them because you know that they're struggling with something. You know that they're, they're dealing with something in particular. Just come to the altar and pray. Pray for one another. Pray at all times. Lord, we love you and we thank you for this privilege that we have to have this fellowship with you through prayer. Lord, I pray this morning as we've come together as your body here in this place that we truly understand the significance and the importance of prayer. And Lord, as we conclude this service this morning, the call to respond is to simply come and pray, to pray for my family, to pray for this church family, to pray for my church, to pray for the ministries of this church, to pray for the spiritual battles that families are raging in, Lord, I pray that we would come and that we would pray and that we would pour out our hearts to you because we can't do anything. We cannot do anything as a church apart from prayer. I hope this message from God's Word was encouraging and challenging to you and will help you throughout the week as you grow in your relationship with Jesus. At Delaney, we want to help you take your next step of faith and we know how difficult that can be just watching a message on screen every week. So we invite you to come visit us on Sunday morning and experiencing worshiping God together with other like-minded followers of Jesus. Delaney is a community that passionately loves and cares for each other. You can find out more about our church family at delaneychurch.org. And we look forward to seeing you soon. God bless you.